Hey folks, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, I surely appreciate you stopping in. And if you're a repeat subscriber and viewer, I uh, really, really appreciate your support over the last several years, guys. Like I always say, guys, as we build these uh, videos for like-minded folks just like you and I to, to help us all get to the finish line quicker, uh, but more proficiently. And today, like a lot of videos do, but today um, that ties right to this. What we're doing, guys, is we are cutting in a new food plot here on a new property here in central Kentucky and we're going to talk about the do's and the don'ts of building and excavating out a new plot. So what you always want to remember guys is this just because it's a god-given opening right doesn't mean that it has to be a food plot so i think that's one of the biggest things is over time that i've seen that uh, you know it's kind of a food plot fail right so make sure that you put some thought into a lot of thought into where are we putting that food plot does it make sense can you get past it and uh it you know the food plot is 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 a powerful piece of the puzzle but it's all for none if you can't get in and off the property without blowing that food source out. So make sure it's in the right spot, right? The thing that I see the most that we're going to touch on today, the thing that I see the most that, you know, ruins a food plot, let's say, right, or makes a food plot not work is what we do with the debris. The debris, um, you know, adds up. You can see this, this spot here has already got some sunlight into it. It's a nice ridge top here and we actually used it last year kind of as a food source um, but we're, we're blowing this in we're putting this we're making this bigger it, it's not a it's not a big plot it's probably about four tenths when we get done but it's got a lot of tree uh, you know canopy and a lot of tree growth on it right now so with that said guys remember this never put that on the dough bedding side always remember um, this one here, we have really nice natural screening that drops off. The fence line is down just over the crown here that we're going to come in and walk past this down here. This is all going to be built up at the top. And then it slopes just, just kind of lightly goes that way. And what we're doing, guys, is the deer will never uh, know we're in here. But we're going to make it even better. What we're doing is we're taking all this debris, all of this uh, logs and tops and everything else, and we're going to put it right over here. We're going to put it right over here on this side. And then we're going to put the tops along and we're going to build a brush berm on the opposite side of our dough bedding. So in other words, on our access side. And so if you were on a flat piece of ground, uh, you know, that this wasn't the case that it dropped off behind us, you can use that as screening getting past it. If you put this debris on the side of your dough bedding, um, on the core side or the, the dough bedding side of that. What you're doing guys is it's a huge predator trap that it creates and they will uh, avoid it like the plague. So you want to try to get that off the edge of the food plot. First and foremost, don't put it on the dough bedding side, right? Secondly, put the, put the debris on your access side. And we want to try to put that about at least, I try to do is about at least at, at about 30 or 40 feet off from the food plot where it's going to be planted. Because if you don't, um, and you've probably seen this numerous times, is if you leave that brush wall, they will, um, they'll eat up next to it at night, but they will not get near it during the daylight. And what it does, guys, is it just, it just wastes a lot of space, especially when we're not dealing with, you know, large pieces of the, uh, of that to begin with, right, of, of a plot area to begin with. Um, on the dough bedding side of it, if you were to put that there, it creates that predator trap. Stumps, guys, never put the stump, the bottom of the stump towards towards that uh, bedding or dough side, the uh, tree is going to be back towards the, the food plot and the root base, the root ball, I guess you could say, right, is going to be flared away. Um, what they do, guys, is you put so many of them, of them together in a pile and it, be, it becomes, it, they've got dark holes in there. Them dark spaces are what predation lives in. Um, so always remember, take that debris, put it on the opposite side of what you got um, of your dough bedding and you'll keep that clean and it's just a it's a way cleaner look and the deer sure appreciate it as well this one here we've got some mulching that we're going to do later on this property maybe this year maybe next year uh, so i'm just going to stump this i'm going to cut this just as low flush cut them as low as i possibly can 
and then we're going to get the daylight in here we're going to plant some probably some rye and and uh, just rye and clover on it this year get the soil start you know to get to uh, form that soil back in shape and then we'll come in and mulch these stumps right down next year they got a you know a year on them by then uh you know they're about a year old and they'll break apart a little more one other thing is to touch on here guys is what i see probably the second biggest devastation of uh, food plots especially if they're small to begin with always remember don't leave trees in your food plots i know maybe some you know you get building it and this one here has got you know a couple of really nice little white oaks and you know some stuff and maybe a hickory dropping some hickory nuts and it's just they create such a shade guys and i i'm not a fan of it it takes away from so much right now like i'm leaving the stumps in here so we're already losing two foot here and two foot there and it it's it will shock you on how much you know stumpage and, and shade really takes from um you know a small food plot i wouldn't leave them on a large food plot and i surely wouldn't leave them uh leave any trees standing out in a small plot right so the the goal is is to get the sunlight down uh, into that plot so what i always do kind of as a third the third thing right the third fail of the food plot of the new creation of a food plot always remember you always have to look to that southern sky which is that side of us here you always have to look to that southern sky and even if you don't kill uh, or cut them out um, make sure maybe you hack and squirt the the uh, you know south side of your food plot stronger um, just to get that sunlight in there's some folks out there uh, I was actually tagged in the video the other day that says all your food plots need to run east and west and don't don't ever do a food plot that runs north and south and uh, that's not the case uh, actually food plots that run north and south the sunlight shines down them directly down them more than it does east and west food plots because like I said most folks don't take the time to uh, you know cut um, or kill the vegetation or the tree stock on the south side of the food plots now if it was all east and west then we would never have long linear food plots that run per your your access right and that's so don't do that that's that's not the truth um but um i think i know where they were going with that topic is just to help with the sun uh, but east and west food plots especially long narrow east and west food plots are way worse than north and south food plots because like i said if they're not very wide then your your canopy there uh this it blocks that sun when it's leaf out that sun's in that southern sky and it never hits the plot so with that said guys is put them where they need to be and then we can always do certain things with trees to get the sunlight where we need them right whether that's edge edge feathering if it's a larger plot or like i said going in you know 50 feet on the south side of that food plot and hacking hacking squirting them or whatever the case is if you don't need to you know cut them down um, all kinds of things that we can do so those three things there guys are the biggest um are the biggest hurdles that i see and kind of issues that uh, you know have um, make a food plot fail go the extra step go the extra mile to uh you know take those things into consideration when you're making those and i think you'll have a more successful food plotting experience uh initial build so we're gonna do some cutting here guys and this is what it looks like before uh and we'll do oh uh, probably a couple hours worth of saw work here and, and we're gonna do some pushing and some dragging and and then i've got some work other work i can't do with my tractor i'm gonna have to have the dozer in you know but uh, do some skidding and stuff but uh, we're gonna get some of this poked out today and get some sunlight down in here and we'll bring you along in the progress thanks guys Well, uh, a couple hours of saw work and um, sore back, I'm all done. I ended up having to, it's kind of one of those um, learning points, right? Just always learn on each one. I got this little uh, John Deere uh, 4320 and I couldn't push the, so the, the, the plot here, guys, lays on a little, just a little slope, not, not steep at all, just a little slope where it's going in. And uh, I didn't have the horsepower to move that stuff from the bottom up to the top on my wall some of it i was able to 
but uh, the majority of it so what I did is just remember you know push it to the sides not the dough the dough bedding sides you can see that's all my going to be dough bedding down there just off you know 20 30 yards into that or 20 feet I'm sorry down just off the edge of the plot will be cut in a transition and then the, the dough bedding is behind it and with that um, you know with that being said I, I push push this most to the uh, the ends of it the sides of it I guess you could say uh, and not up against that uh, dough bedding um, side the front of the dough bedding so um, yeah so that's uh, kind of you know one of those things you just do with what you got as far as the horsepower just remember don't push it towards the uh, dough bedding so I do have um, I'll show you here I do have a few tops like this here that went down in there that's fine the log is gone it's just one top and then there will be on the back side of the transition and it's not just a wall there's another top there that I couldn't get sucked out of there but it's all open behind it right it's not a wall so a couple things here I think on the, the we'll add maybe we'll make a top five here of this video instead of maybe three uh, one thing that I see a lot of folks doing is building brush berms and then leaving an opening where you want the, you know the critters to come through you know, I, I refer to that as a blocker. I don't use my blockers on my food plots, guys, because the you, you don't want that pinch. Now, something like this where there's a top right there and the end of that pile, that berm that I pushed up off the end of the plot is right here. Well, that's kind of a, a natural look, but it's not, you know, a whole berm and then just a 20 feet opening or something. Another thing is this, probably the biggest point is this. Remember, guys, when you're doing these, do not, whatever you do, do not uh, push the topsoil off. So I come in here uh, and I, you know, push the uh, debris off, but the topsoil is left. Uh, this is one of those, you know, perfect situations where you couldn't till this. Stumps are in here, right? We wouldn't want to till it anyway. Um, but the slope, we have erosion, and this isn't going anywhere. All this rootstock is in here, and I'm just cleaning the top of it off. So, like I said, guys, the last point here, probably the biggest topic, is not taking off the topsoil. If you're, I see time and time again, dozers are great, but dozers get folks in trouble. And what happens is, is they come in, they pull the rootstock out, pull the stumps out, put the piles in here, and the whole time you're taking all of this topsoil, whatever is topsoil, right? You're taking it off, and you're putting it in these berms. You can see, guys, these berms that I've got off here. I got one little pocket here, and then I've got one up there. And I've got one on our access over there. None of those have an ounce of topsoil on them. So you need to leave that on the plots. If you buy something, uh, like I you know, bought the main farm here in Kentucky, uh, and they had went in and put you know, field you know, extensions on, and they actually took topsoil stumps and cedars and everything and pushed them off. So a couple things there, you guys just remember, kind of all of those together, uh, you know, the debris, not on the dough bedding side. Make sure you're leaving your topsoil here. Um, if, then we'll come back in and we'll mulch this, you know, these stumps down as they decay over time. Maybe do a plot extension. Um, this whole list here, guys, of just things to to try to remember when you're doing a plot, not to get yourself uh, in trouble and not build your or not give yourself a whole boatload more of work to do. <coughs> and uh, and it's just like today, you know, I had to kind of do what my horsepower allowed uh, and it just look it looks clean and it's not prepped yet with the ground i got to clean all this off with like a york rake or something the debris off from it the little sticks and then we'll spray it and and we'll go you know put seed down um, but it's clean it doesn't look like a tornado around the edges of it very inviting they can get in and out of the plot those are the tips guys on kind of what to look for on a new plot build and what to do and what not to do um, here on another Built by Whitetails segment. Thanks, guys.